Today we're going to go ahead and try and do some of the navigation modes. Um, last, first time I made in this, the video part six or whatever it was, um, the GPS wasn't working, so I couldn't actually show the return to home or any of those features. So part of that, we're also going to go ahead and try and do return to home. So we're going to connect here to iNav real quick. Um, first thing we'll do is look at our advanced tuning. I just want to show you down here we've got our throttle and the fixed wing navigation stuff. We've got our throttle set to 1400 for cruise. Um, I'm actually going to bump that up because I put a smaller prop on here. And um, minimum 12 and 17. So that's just kind of as it's doing its return to home, it'll use those uh, levels. Other is the return to home settings over here. I want at least or linear. That means if I'm higher than the 7600 centimeters, which is roughly 200 feet, then it'll come down to that slowly as it re or linearly as it returns. And I never want it to land. Um, I'm too worried about trees. I don't fly in the prairies or somewhere where you don't have any trees to worry about, so I wouldn't want it to hit a tree as it's trying to land from whatever direction it's coming from. And the rest of these are kind of just let alone. So we'll go ahead and save and reboot that real quick. The one other thing I want to check before we set up the waypoint stuff. Actually, we'll do a mission first, and then we'll go and check that. So this loads up. Uh, I have my laptop hooked up to uh, Wi-Fi, so it should come up with a map. It always loads up at, I guess, uh, zero and zero, so the equator and Greenwich Mean Time or whatever, zero latitude and longitude. So you got to move it over to where you're at. Sorry, I'm going to blur this out. Love to have everybody come fly with me, but uh, private farm. So now that we're kind of in on this farm where I'm flying, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start over here in this corner. So I'm going to set up just a box just to kind of show. So I'm going to put one down here at the end of this lane. I'm come down here to this corner, this corner, put one here to bring it across, and then we'll put this the final one here. I'm going to jump in here real quick. I just noticed um, later in the video, uh, later in the day, I guess, as I was doing this, I had an issue where I tried to launch on the waypoint mission, and I got a message that said first waypoint too far. So what I went back and looked in the CLI and found that there's actually a command that says the the 10,000 is the default, is the uh, basically 100 meters your first waypoint has to be from your home location. As you see, my home location was about 500 uh, meters from my first waypoint, so um, I m ended up moving my first waypoint closer, but later I'll change this CLI command. Um, I would suggest, I guess, noting that and changing it if you need that but just wanted to explain that the waypoints I had set up here just a second ago are going to be a little different than when I actually fly the waypoint mission later in the video. I've not 100% on this. I'm just going off of what I've found. So I always do a save mission of FC, save EEPROM. You may have heard my flight controller just did it, and I'm going to save again and save again. Okay, so we've got that all set up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was go into the CLI real quick, and I'm going to type get launch. And I want to increase my launch throttle. Right now it's 1600. I'm going to take set, paste that in there, and I'm going to make it 1750. Because I went from a 6 inch prop down to a 5, um, 5150, I believe it is, 5152. So I'm going to try and see how that does with this higher KV motor. I'm going to hit enter, save. It's going to reboot us. Okay, so that's going to conclude everything on the laptop. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect and uh, be right back with the uh, goggle view and everything like that. Okay, so uh, just did all the launch. We're good to go. This five-inch prop is doing nice. I'm um, only uh, running six amps and 50% throttle and staying in the air just fine. So it's 
good to know. It's first time actually trying this prop as part of this awesome video. So uh, first thing I'm gonna try is, let's go ahead and do an altitude hold. So right now I'm at 265 feet and if I turn, I'm just doing a roll turn right now and it's gonna hold and it's gonna try and keep me there. So if I do 3D cruise, let's see how this does, it's 260 feet. And it should try and hold me straight in that direction. So those two modes look like they're working really well. And if I want to turn on this, you can use yaw, um, which is a flying wing, so it doesn't actually yaw, but if you use yaw input, it will turn and it should keep us right there, 260. It's going up a little bit, but that's just because it's banking into the wind, I think. See, it comes back around. The one thing you gotta remember is when you're doing that, it's gonna go more than what you thought. Like I let go and it was straight with that road and it started to go a little bit more left of the road, so I let go and came back. Okay, so that works good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off 3D Cruise. I'm gonna try return to home. We are in route to home. Okay, so I believe it's about 250 feet, looks like so. Right there, in route. And then it's gonna loiter. And it's gonna sit here and just carry on flying in circles here. <coughs> Okay, so that's working well. We're still staying 250 feet, loitering over home. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna come out this way, I'm gonna gain a little altitude, and I'm gonna actually turn off my radio to show what happens when you fail safe. So I am going to, just to uh, help out in case, but I have had this happen before, so I, I am trusting this setup. Um, never trust your setup. <laughs> only I only know it works because like I said I've had it happen and it worked and I know that my settings that I have in here are good um, until you have know your settings are absolutely good I would not suggest trying this so what I'm gonna do is bring it around I'm gonna put it back in 3d cruise headed kind of towards us okay so right now we're in 3d cruise so what I'm gonna do is turn off my radio So there you go, my radio just shut off. I'm in fail safe and it's returning to home. So now what happens when you have a fail safe? The aircraft is gonna stay in fail safe when you turn, so I turn my radio back on. You have to make sure all your switches are good and all that. So I'm gonna put the arm switch back and then what it's waiting for is for me to move my sticks. So once I move my sticks, I should take over control again. Pausing again here, notice that the throttle level is at zero in my kind of panic, I guess. Um, even though I've done fail safes before, I've had return to home issues before and I've gotten out of them for some reason, I didn't think about the fact that I still had my throttle at zero. So you'll notice here the throttle never moves. I had that stick all the way down. I guess in my mind I was thinking about how you have to have it at zero to arm and in kind of, like I said, panicking as I'm going towards the ground, um, I didn't think about throttling up. Instead, I disarm and rearm. So you'll see here um, what I went through. I'm not sure why it locks up in autopilot. I couldn't get out. I ended up disarming, which she still has servos. So I was able to then turn the plane so it landed in the field instead of out in the water. But um, that's what's going to happen here in a second. Except what it did is it disarmed. Oops. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is exactly why you only do it places where you know what you're doing or you got um, what's going on. So what happened there is for some reason, I think actually all I had to do was uh, throttle up. <laughs> I was at zero throttle, so that way I could rearm if I needed to. And when I rearmed, it wasn't going anywhere. Instead of just throttling up, I ended up disarming and then trying to rearm. And for some reason, oh, I know it was waiting. I don't know, it should have undone autopilot. So what we're gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna go get my wing and we'll come back and uh, We'll try the waypoint mission. Let's try this again. <laughs> so I think now we've got the waypoint set in the correct 
first position's close enough to us. They are now at a good height. And let's go ahead and try this again. So we're gonna go ahead and auto launch. Go ahead and come around this way. So I'm actually gonna start below, so this should come up. Okay, that should be our first waypoint. Second waypoint should be about here. Turning left. We'll see how this might get a little staticky on my uh, DVR. I'll cut it into the GoPro if it does. Okay, I think we got about that one. Should come out right over that little white building, I think, and then hit left again. So one thing I have noticed Okay, so yeah, it continues to say in route to home. However, we're actually now loitering over home. So it should be actually trying to come down. But okay, so what we'll go ahead and knock that out. Um, you can see the batteries. Says saggy batteries already low, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring her back. And uh, yeah, that's how you do a waypoint mission. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna rip it and do some gaps. So, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, leave them down below. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, it's probably the last part in this 2019 SA100 build video since it's uh, October, or end of October, almost November. So, uh, hope everybody has enjoyed this. Uh, I don't have plans to do another build yet, but if people uh, do happen to have enough comments and things, I might try and do something else. But again, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, enjoy these next few clips of just me hitting some uh, gaps and bashing the S800 because it's a great plane for that.